When war came to the United States in 1941, many of Hollywood's greatest directors signed up to apply their fictional movie skills to making documentaries. Seen here, upper left, Frank Capra, below him, George Stevens, in the center, John Ford, and to his right, William Wyler, traded carefully structured scripts for stories which didn't follow standard plot lines. Throughout Screening Reality, I tell how nonfiction filmmakers and their films interacted with the world around them. During World War II, a long tradition of racial injustice needed to be confronted. The documentary, The Negro Soldier, was an attempt to include African Americans in the nation's military history, even if segregation remained in place. Oops. After victory in the film Let There Be Light, Hollywood director John Huston addressed the reality of what combat can do to the human mind and spirit. Even as his film showed how therapy can help, his, his portrayal of the less heroic side of war led Let There Be Light to be banned for more than 20 years. With the rise of television in the late 40s and 50s, even if airtime was mostly consumed by easy to take entertainment, the power of documentaries was revealed by the video journalism of Edward R. Murrow and Fred Friendly. Their critical examination of the toxic influence of anti-communist Senator Joseph R. McCarthy contributed to his downfall. But it wasn't long before challenging long-form documentaries and cultural programs were headed toward extinction on advertised-driven American TV networks. <laughs> 